Yeah, buddy. Not a bad place to live. Green Peter Reservoir. One of Oregon's amazing recreational areas. Secluded, quiet, crystal clear waters. Until. Stemming from a lawsuit, a court ruled that the Army Corps of Engineers, who manages the dams, was in violation of the Endangered Species Act. U.S. District Judge Marco Hernandez issued an injunction in September of 2021, requiring the Corps to start deep drawdowns of four reservoirs, including Green Peter, which was to have the deepest of drawdowns. In June 2023, the drawdowns began. In August, Green Peter's drawdown started in earnest. Kokanee are a landlocked sockeyed salmon that never leave the fresh water and spawn in the rivers and streams of their home lake. The drawdown, which was to benefit the Chinook salmon, had the opposite effect on the Kokanee salmon. Estimates are 8 to 10,000 kokanee salmon died due to barotrauma, a condition that is caused by rapid pressure reduction when fish pass deep on one side of the dam and come out at the surface on the other side. The effect is similar to divers experiencing the bends if they come up too fast. I didn't understand nor learn of the full impact it would truly have on our community until October 6th, when I started to receive text messages and images of thousands of dead fish that were coming from the Green Peter Dam and Reservoir. What also became apparent was what the drawdown was doing to water quality. Large quantities of silt had been loosened in the process and was left clouding the water downstream. I first learned about the drawdown in February of 2023 when the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers came to Sweet Home and held a public meeting where they outlined the plans that they had in light of the injunction that was put on them at the federal court level. There they presented models of what they anticipated would happen. So there's different aspects of the drawdown that was, that was modeled, right? Um, we modeled the fish passage aspects of it. We modeled but the, the one that most folks are, are interested in hearing about is the water quality pieces of it. Um, and it was really modeled in two ways. It was, the turbidity was modeled. It's, you know, what is so visual and everybody, you know, sees and is, is upset about. Um, but also the temperature was modeled. And, and both of those, you know, um, I would say were, were things that we knew were gonna have some impact. The impact was far-reaching. Not far below Green Peter Reservoir is Foster Reservoir. Foster serves as the water supply for the city of Sweet Home. Residents found their usual crystal clear water now cloudy. Sweet Home Water Treatment Facility brought a third filter online and added additional chlorine to help offset the changes in water quality. Due to the amount of silt still in water, residents noted that the quality was not overly improved. Good evening, everybody. We're really glad you are here. 
I know that we're not here on good terms right now, or for good, like, We're not here reasons. for a stupid school, freaking. Further downstream, the city of Lebanon and also Albany had to compensate for the changes in water quality. Estimates are as high as seven million will need to be spent by the three cities to correct the water quality. The impact to the fish of Green Peter and Foster Reservoirs is, let's say, unclear. The potential impact of turbidity on fish depends upon the level of the turbidity, how long it lasts, the size and particles of the turbidity, the life stage of the fish being affected, and the temperature. For example, a fish has more trouble bringing oxygen into its body when there are high levels of turbidity. So that stresses the fish out and it can cause disease. Temperature, if temperatures are higher, that can also impact fish, particularly salmonids. Also, in terms of feeding, when turbidity is high, fish are not as easily able to find food, and so they frequently lose weight. And they can also be more susceptible to predation because they cannot see predators. The Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife will conduct a survey below Foster Dam this year looking for young of the year Chinook, which means we are looking for fish that have hatched out of eggs this spring. If we find good numbers of those young of the year, we will likely be able to conclude that there was good production and that a number of reds were not smothered by the turbidity or by settlement set settling out from the turbidity. We will also be looking for evidence of that sediment on the river bottom as we do the survey. With Green Peter drained, boat launches and campgrounds were closed. They are expected to remain closed for almost seven months. The impact to local businesses is significant. Fishermen, boaters, and campers looking to grab last minute supplies before heading up to Green Peter and Foster are now not coming. And, and for as, you know, our business has been, there's been a drastic drop, 25 to 30% drop in calls coming in and in um, boat sales is down about 70%, which has been a, always been a big part of what we do is boat sales. Uh, and as of now, this is March 2024, and we've sold one boat this year. You know, I have... 15 boats on the lot and I've sold one all year. So has it affected us? Greatly. Our dream was to uh, uh, find a, a home with a view and, and we knew Sweet Home was a beautiful area. We had uh, been here before and we got kind of tired of staring at the back of our neighbor's house for 20 years and looking for uh, something like this, um, which uh, when we saw the house, we fell in love with it. And we love the community and, and uh, just enjoy it every, every time since we moved here until we noticed uh, our beautiful lake is transformed into something that looks like chocolate milk. It, what's really frustrating is this is affecting uh, our view. It's affecting our property values. It's affecting our drinking water. It's affecting our recreation. It's affecting business in town. I'm Milton Moran. I am the president of Cascade Timber Consulting, have been since January 1st, 2018, and I've never seen a sustained for seven plus weeks now of this heavy turbidity. Never seen this. A prudent person saw the mud that was coming out of this when it, when it got to that point where it was super muddy. Why didn't someone say, let's hold off a minute? What's it gonna hurt? Shut it off, take a look, you know, do some analysis and say, this is gonna be terribly dirty for the river 
and and I thought, well, what are we talking? A couple weeks? Here it has been seven plus weeks now, and we're still seeing this turbidity at great levels. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it, if we did this as an industry, we would be in big trouble. Big trouble. A key point in this in this whole thing to understand is that once we had that action identified in the judge's final order, the final order is not discretionary. And, and so really, you know, the bar for us to have either stopped something or, or done something different, we would have had to identify it like a life safety issue. Maybe the drawdown wasn't life-threatening but the impact to the surrounding communities and the ecosystem was immense. Is the ecosystem expected to repair itself by the time the next drawdown occurs again in the later half of 2024? Did it really achieve its goal? But at what cost? What is the best outcome? the best outcome for the city of Sweet Home would be to not have this drawdown happen again. Currently, the plans are that the drawdown would occur annually, and we would anticipate that we would inc encounter some of the same issues that we've encountered this year. So not having the drawdown happen again is the best outcome for us. We would also like to see solutions that would actually help the salmon, other solutions besides a drawdown. There are other options that we know of. We just know they cost the federal government money. And so far, there hasn't been any money allocated for those options. We would like to see the federal government choose to put money towards options that do not impact our drinking water and other wildlife. In December, the Army Corps of Engineers came under scrutiny as the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality sent the Army Corps a notice that the Corps had violated the state's water quality standards due to the increased turbidity. In February, the governor of Oregon sent a letter to the communities affected saying, What happened to your communities is unacceptable. I assure you that my team and I are closely tracking this discussion. The Corps has proposed over a billion dollars in recovery measures that have considerable uncertainty being realized. Our agencies are advocating that the lower cost solutions to address diminishing fish runs covered by the federal ESA be examined and that any cost to the communities be factored into the federal budget. I mean, I'm a public servant. And, and the reality is, I hate being I don't like people being impacted. I mean, that's the last thing I want in my role. Last thing I want, and, and so it's, it's just painful. Although the state of Oregon was not pleased with the way the drawdown of Green Peter was handled, nonetheless, the state so far has been unwilling to compensate the impacted cities for the extra millions that had to be averted to water treatment. I don't know if the damage done by all this silt loading in the river, if, is, it, is it irreparable? Is it ever gonna be okay? Is it gonna be fine gravels here again? It, there will, probably will be eventually, but in the meantime, there's been an awful lot of damage, I think, to the, to the ecosystem in the South San Am River. You know, they, they say that uh, fish need invertebrates to live on and they, they're really concerned, people I've heard, quite concerned that the invertebrates that are in the river that feed the fish aren't surviving this, this heavy siltation. Some of the guys with sonar have come by, some of the guys with the $900,000 boats, and they're not seeing any kokanee running sonar. And they have the, the most high-tech advanced stuff that you can get. And uh, one gentleman who I trust greatly said, he saw three fish and they were up there about four hours and they were bass. And that was the only three fish they saw the whole time. Due to heavier than expected rains, Green Peter Reservoir is ahead of schedule for refilling. On the surface, the lake looks normal. Will the boaters and campers return? Probably. 
Can the ecosystem recover by the next drawdown? Probably not.